We're talking today about uh, deer fence for young fruit trees. When we plant a fruit tree, we're not keeping any fence around it, so it's vulnerable, particularly in the first couple of years of growth, to deer damage. So what we're trying to do is make cages for our young fruit trees. We've got uh, about 17 trees that we need cages for. We bought a roll of 330 foot of what I call hog wire, what they call field fence. It's 12 and a half gauge and you can bend it with your hand, but you can also bend it with a pair of pliers. This is a pair of lineman's pliers that I'm using. And what we're going to do is make cages that are four feet in diameter. Now, I'm sure you remember this from your high school geometry. I didn't. I had to look up that the formula for the circumference of a circle is pi times d, pi times the diameter. So 3.145 or so times um, 4, which is the diameter we want, is roughly 12 and a half feet. So we're trying to uh, make, cut off 12 and a half feet of hog wire. And the way I've done it is to put a couple of markers down. What I did is put down duct tape in one place and then measure about 12 and a half feet down here to get the other mark. And what I'm doing with this hog wire is just measuring out 12 and a half feet. And I gotta have something to weight it down while I measure. And as you can see here, we're a little bit past the mark, which is fine with me. And what I'm going to do is take my pliers and cut it off here and then form it into a circle. What we're going to do is bend each one of these just a little. Actually, I'm going to bend the top and the bottom. They're heavier wire. I'm going to bend the top and the bottom so that it's nice and firm. I'm going to flip this fence. So back, yeah. And once I've bent the top and the bottom, we know this circle will stay formed. And then we're going to take it out to where the fruit trees are. It's actually the next day now. We're about we're now out in the orchard, um, getting ready to put the last of the cages on here. I put the others on here and save this one so Amanda could shoot me. Um, but I wanted to show you this wire that we are using. I'm going to hold it right here. It's very thin, like thin spaghetti, and the purpose of it is to attach the cage to the um, T-post. I'm sure there's some manufactured solution like a T-post clip or something like that, but this was what I wanted to use because I knew I could get it on and off easily with my hands. It's not galvanized, so it'll rust, but I figure these cages aren't going to be out here for more than a year or two, and over that period of time, I don't think the wire's going to tear up or anything. So what I'm going to do is cut about two of these because that's about all we need now of about 10, 12 inches, and that's going to get us started with, these, uh, with attaching them to the T-post. So now we've got our wire ready to go. I'm going to bend that back so it won't unwind on us. And what we're going to do next is to drive the T-post in the ground, and I'm going to stop so that um, Amanda can put her earplugs in before we do that. I made a little template with a one by two here that tells me how long, how far I need to be away. We we talked this through, and we've decided even though this fig is terribly misshapen, 
and it's all growing in that direction. We're not going to try to pull it around because we know it needs eventually to grow in the shape of a bowl. So we're going to hope that some new growth comes along heading this way. But just in case, I'm going to put the T-post here so that we can pull it this way if we decide we need to. And I'm using this little template that tells me exactly 24 inches. So I'm going to lay this down and then I'm going to drive the T-post. If you are driving more than one or two T-posts, you need to go ahead and invest in this. It's a T-post driver and it makes all the difference in the world at our scale. Now I'm sure for somebody who's into it in a big way, there's probably some power T-post driver. But for what we do, this is ideal. This is our cage that we put out here. And what I've learned is this will go a lot better if you hook one end on the T-post and then wrap the other toward it. And I am purposefully keeping these loose so that we can come back later if we want to and take this apart so we can do pruning or supplement mulch or anything like that that we need to do. And here's where our little wire comes in. We've got our cage put together now, and I'm going to wrap this wire around the T-post and the cage, and now we're going to wrap that around, and that's all we need to do. And now we're going to do the same thing here at ground level, just a couple of twists, and we're done. And that's done now. We've got a cage in place, and the deer are going to be deterred. What my Somebody smart told me, remember, you're not trying to deter a charging bull. You're trying to deter a curious deer. So it doesn't need to be super strong. just needs to get in their way.